And we are back on Upper Left Sports this Friday. And we're talking Huskies now. We did our WSU Cougar preview on Wednesday. This morning, we're going to be doing a Huskies and Ducks preview. But let's go across the mountains over to the west side for a minute. And the first thing we need to talk about with this Huskies team is Chris Peterson is gone. Jimmy Lake is the new man over in Seattle. That's a huge, huge change in Seattle. Chris Peterson, of course, really came into this program when a time that UW needed a change. They were coming off one of their worst seasons, and Chris Peterson had a proven track record down in Boise State. You might remember a guy by the name of Kellen Moore down there. They made uh, quite an epic run over about two years. And Chris Peterson brought that mentality to Seattle and immediately changed that team, really put them back on the map. And we saw their recruiting take a huge jump with Chris Peterson as well. Uh, and that, you know, we, we look forward to this year. It's only going to continue. Uh, but the big news here, Chris Peterson stepped down very unexpectedly. Uh, you know, nobody really saw that coming. Uh, fortunately for UW, they have a guy by the name of Jimmy Lake who is in the program, familiar, and was an easy, easy decision to hand the reins off to. Yeah, there was a lot of surprise. I mean, right after the Apple Cup last year, Chris Peterson's news came out that he would be stepping back. And, you know, it's kind of similar to a situation that we have in Spokane with Mark Few and Tommy Lloyd, is I think everyone knew that the day that Chris Peterson uh, left, it was Jimmy's job. Uh, and, and the thing is, is he had other job offers out there. He could have left the program. Uh, I think those two had had some conversations that uh, he would get the opportunity, and he, he waited it out. The time's his now, and I think the question on everyone's mind is before Chris Peterson took over this Husky program, they were struggling. You know, the year that the Cougs didn't win a game, the Huskies were very close. They uh, they had years of no bowl appearances, and you never know. When a, a coach like Chris Peterson comes from a small school like Boise State, even with the success they'd had, Will it translate to the next level? And it kind of felt like when he left Boise and came to Seattle, it was like taking Chris Peterson and he was in a Chevy sedan and you put him in a Ferrari getting to recruit guys to the Emerald City. That's a huge change, man. You talk about recruiting. I mean, getting someone to Boise versus getting someone to Seattle. We talk about a beautiful scenery. We talk about an amazing campus and the athletic department and the tools they provide there are absolutely elite as well. So uh, I tell you what, man, he hopped in that Ferrari and he definitely took off running. We saw him make a huge change and it was just an immediate, immediate, you know, visual. You could see everything happening right there. You knew it was going to be good things for them. And let's be honest, also one of the best um, scenes, one of the best stadiums in college football. And so uh, will Jimmy Lake be able to continue that success that Chris Peterson saw or will we see the, the dogs take a step back to the pre-Peterson era? We don't know yet, uh, and we won't know for a little bit of time uh, as this week's game has been canceled uh, against Cal due to COVID-19. Um, but let's take a step back and look at the 2019 Huskies and how they finished up. 8-5 and five record on the season. They were 4-5 and five in the Pac-12. However, Las Vegas Bowl versus Boise State, 38-7, to seven, so end of the season on top. And the 2020 recruiting class has a 17 national rank. So that has to be a little bit of a head start for Jimmy Lake going in. That's a, that's a huge start for him, man. I tell you what, we talk about would he be able to continue that recruiting. We've seen him bring in a great class right away. This team didn't quite finish last year the way that they had hoped. Of course, playing Boise State, not an in-state rivalry, but a game that you know UW wanted to win. And they came out and made a statement in that game. So... Props to them. It was a huge win. And you talk about the talent they're bringing in this year. It really is led by a local recruit. Great job from UW, keeping the guys at home. Uh, Savelle Smalls, this is a guy who played D-end in high school, was ranked number 30 in the nation. Uh, and he's going to come in. He's listed as a linebacker. But look for Savelle Smalls to make a difference on this team right away. Uh, you know, again, he's leading that 17th ranked class in the nation. So, this is a talented team coming in. We've got some experience issues we're going to get in a little bit, uh, but when you talk about the talent out there, they have every bit of it. We know it all starts with the quarterback position, and Jacob Eason has moved on. A uh, guy came up, transferred from Georgia, a local kid, ended up having a great career with the Huskies. And you look back a couple years ago to 
uh, the stable of quarterbacks that they had up at Mountlake, and there were plenty of four or five star uh, recruits that were just sitting there waiting to play. However, a lot different story this year, and we still don't have a starter named by Jimmy Lake. Who are you expecting to see under center that first game for the Huskies, whenever that may be? You know, that's a tough call, man. You talk about a stable of options. Uh, UW has a stable of quarterback options as well. So that depth chart, like you said, Jimmy Lake's keeping it close to the chest. He gets another week to do that as well, kind of keep everybody on their toes. Uh, but we really don't know. We don't have a quarterback who is, you know, a returning starter. Of course, Jacob Eason's gone. Um, but let's take a look through them. Let's start with a guy who probably comes in with the, not probably, he does come in with the most experience playing college football, and that's going to be Kevin Thompson, a graduate transfer who spent four years at Sacramento State in the big sky. Uh, if you're an Eagles fan, you are probably very, very familiar with him as well. This is a guy last year, 2019, was the big sky offensive player of the year, and he finished third in the Walter Payton Award voting. If you're not familiar with FCS, the Walter Payton Award is the FCS Offensive Player of the Year. So this is a guy, like I said, he comes in, he has the experience, and we, of course, look for that experience to usually give you that nod on opening day. But this team is not alone. He's not alone in that uh, in that quarterback room. We've got multiple other guys here who are great options. Let's start with uh, Ethan Garbers, who was recruited, and he comes in as a freshman He's a four-star QB out of Corona Del Mar High School in California. Uh, he was, uh, let's see here, uh, had offers from Georgia, Miami, among other schools. So he had plenty of big-time schools to go to. He did choose to commit to UW. Uh, Dylan Morris, another four-star QB out of Graham, Washington. He had offers from Oregon, Notre Dame, and Nebraska. So, again, we talk about big-time offers for these guys, and they're choosing to come up to Seattle and uh, compete up there as well. Yeah, you know, we were talking about it with our WSU season preview, is would Rolovich choose uh, a guy who he knew he could have for four years, or is it more of a win-now choice? Maybe that's one and the same. I think with the Huskies, you look at this and say, a guy like Kevin Thompson comes in, he's only got a year of eligibility. Can he come in and take this Husky team to a bowl this year, or are they going to start looking for the future? But I also think... As EG fans, we can look to an example right here where a guy left Cheney, went to Oregon, and had a little bit of success. A little bit, man. Uh, you might remember him. Vernon Adams did absolutely amazing things. And if it wasn't for an opening day injury with his year with Oregon there, you know that could have been a totally different season, even better than it was. So we've definitely seen guys make that jump from the big sky to the Pac-12 and be successful as well. Um, you know, again, though, if we, we talk about options, if it's not working with Thompson, if he doesn't get the nod, there's even an additional QB we didn't mention yet, and that's Jacob Sermon, who's actually the only returning QB that has thrown a pass for UW. He threw three passes last year. Uh, but this is a 6'5 pro-style QB. Again, another local kid out of Bothell, Washington, also a four-star recruit. He might have the highest, uh, you know, recruiting pedigree behind him, being 27th on ESPN's top 300 in his draft class. And we talk about big offers. This guy had offers from Alabama, LSU, Michigan, and Louisville. I mean, that, that right there is just, uh, that's the names of all names. So they have all the options up in Seattle. I do think they're going to lean towards the experience of Kevin Thompson. But we know if it doesn't work out, we know Jimmy Lake's got options. Well, we were hoping to know the answer to that on Saturday. Again, that will have to wait as the game versus Cal has been delayed. So hopefully just one more week until we find out who the Huskies put under center. Let's flip to the other side of the ball and talk about this Huskies defense. And Elijah Molden from 2019, he had 79 tackles, five and a half tackles for loss, four interceptions, and 12 pass deflections. What more can you want out of a cornerback? Elijah Molden has really led this defense. They are physical, hard-hitting defense, and he just is every bit of that description right there. So, again, you know, UW, over the last few years, they've kind of coined themselves, and I think they've fully earned it as well. They are West Coast DBU. This secondary is absolutely loaded, and I tell you what, man, they still focus on defense. Actually, if, uh, if you remember Jimmy Lake on offense, he reported their scrimmage score, and uh, he first tweeted out, it was like 58 to 55, and then a few minutes later he followed up with 
kidding, this isn't the SEC. We still play defense. The scores were in the 20s. So you know this team focuses on the defensive side of the ball. And I tell you what, man, they might be a little bit young overall, but they've got some dudes back there who are ready to come out. This D-line, while it might be young, is big, it is physical, and you know they're going to be getting after the ball this year. Yeah, defensive-minded head coach, and the Huskies do have that head coach locked up through 2024, so we do expect them to kind of stay to script on that.